So there are lots of times in your JavaScript code where you'll want to make a decision and it might be showing a different message to a user or performing a certain action based on a condition. And like with most programming languages, in JavaScript this can be done with an if statement. But before we just get on to what an if statement is and how to use it, let's just talk quickly about coming up with a condition to base our decision on. So let's take a simple example. Let's say we've got a variable called bank balance which has a value assigned to it. And if it's below zero, we want to display a message to the user saying you're overdrawn. And if it's equal to or larger than zero, then we're going to display a message to them saying that they're in credit. So in a previous lesson we looked at the boolean data type and the condition that we're going to be creating will always result in a boolean so it's always going to be true or false. So that makes it really simple to decide which action to take but we first need to come up with a rule to generate our boolean value. So in this case it might be an example to create a variable called overdrawn and we're going to assign that a boolean value but rather than just specifying directly true or false we're going to create an expression otherwise known as a condition which will evaluate to true or false. So here I've created the expression of is the bank balance less than zero and if we examine the overdrawn variable to see its value you'll see it's stored the value of false because the bank balance is obviously greater than zero. If I was to change that to negative 20 though you'll see overdraw now has the value of true stored in it. So that's the first step to making a decision in JavaScript is to come up with that condition and generate a boolean value based on a certain set of circumstances. Now that JavaScript knows that our account is overdrawn, we can put together our if statement. So this is generally what an if statement looks like. We use the keyword if and then in parentheses we put the result of our boolean condition inside there. And if that boolean value is actually true, then the code inside the curly braces will actually run. So you can see in the output on the right hand side we're still getting the you are overdrawn and you are in credit messages. And that's because both the code inside of the curly braces and outside of it is still running. If we were to set our bank balance back to 20 though, you'll see in the output on the right hand side that the overdraw message is no longer displaying. And that's because when the if statement runs, we get the value of false in the overdrawn variable. And any time an if statement encounters a false value, it skips over the code in the curly braces. So setting the bank balance back to negative 20, we have a problem because we're actually still displaying both messages. So if the user is overdrawn, we don't want to display the second message. And we can stop that from happening by adding an else statement as well. So you can see our overdrawn variable has a boolean value of true. So we are seeing the overdrawn message, but the else statement is stopping the second statement that you're in credit from being displayed. So if we put in a positive bank balance now, you can see the code inside the if statement doesn't run, but the code inside the else statement does. So these if and else statements are all based on the boolean condition and we don't actually have to save that in a separate variable for this to work. We could actually just put this straight inside of our if statement here. And you'll find some programmers like to do the condition straight in the if statement and some like to save it into a variable elsewhere. It's just a matter of style and preference really. As long as whatever you put inside of the parentheses for the if statement resolves to a true or false value then your if and else statements will work as expected. Another thing you can do with if statements is to add additional tests inside of your else statements. For example, if the bank balance is larger than 20, we could test it again to see if it's above a certain value. So here I've added another if statement, another test on the bank balance value to see if it's larger than a thousand. And if it is, we display a different message, but if it isn't, then we just display the you are in credit message. So if I raise the value of bank balance now, you can see that the second test for bank balance to see if it's greater than a thousand is true. So it displays the message in the middle of our if else block. So there's no limit to how many of these if statements or else statements you can add into your code. But as you can imagine, if you add more than one or two, it can get a little bit messy. We'll look at some different techniques that you can use to handle lots of these different tests in a future lesson. But before we do that, we'll look at how you can construct more complex Boolean expressions to handle more complicated scenarios.